Hello everybody and welcome to today's edition. Thank you for joining. And the antics we shall be up to today are antics indeed or is antics, namely specifically antics Linux. You know, in our exploration of mini Linuxes on this XP machine, normally. <laughs> So legacy kernel actually works perhaps better for my monitor. I still have not given up using the more modern kernel, but apparently I have to give here a boot parameter. GFX payload is equal to 1024X768 and action. So, <laughs> let's see that, like, Antix is a lightweight distribution, and so in our series of trying out lightweight Linux distributions, that would be fitting. It was also suggested by viewer Yutaka. Yutaka, thank you very much for the suggestion. Yutaka also said that it works for a one gigabyte machine, whereas here we are having a two gigabyte machine with an AMD Athlon 3000 Plus processor from 2003. Three. So let's see how it holds up. <laughs> I'm full of trust that it will be a very nice experience. I briefly tested it yesterday already, just booted it up to spin its wheels a bit. And only issue was that the screen resolution of my FET, the old CRT monitor, is not caught properly. So it believes that uh, it is 640 times 480 <laughs> resolution I haven't seen since the 90s really much in use. So let's see what it will grasp it this time. Ah, the moment of truth is approaching. Will it make the pew and turn my monitor to a proper resolution? Or will it stay that way as if it is 1993? <laughs> will it just do nothing and completely ignore me? <laughs> yeah, 1993 welcomes us. I may have to try out a different boot parameter, but now you saw how long it takes to boot. So see you here in a moment if I manage to get it to work uh, properly with the correct resolution, because it doesn't get it here, unfortunately. Like if I try out things here. So this is Conky. Conky is saying hi to us. You see that the resolution is written here as 640 times 480 and unfortunately it does not allow me to change that but on the other hand maybe i'll stay here for a moment because um that's not actually you know what i'll just stay here because that's actually not so hard to read like you see here everything much bigger and better so while the resolution of course is ridiculous it is easier to read on a phone right so if you go to the control center and where was it here? Here, somewhere here it was, I think in session. Not not 100% um, obvious. If I maximize it, it doesn't become better and I can't unmaximize it. Okay, restore it. <laughs> if I go for set screen resolution and then go to, what is it, properties or what was it? No. Uh, was it default, outputs default, resolution here, outputs. So you see, I don't have any other option. And maybe I'll have to manually fumble around xorg.conf or whatever it is going to be called these days. But the modern kernel doesn't immediately understand, unfortunately. Ah, set screen blanking. How about none? Uh, turn off screen blank timeout. Yes, excellent. 
all right. So use a desktop session. Now I am sure curious. Isn't there anything? Is there anything to change here? Auto scale antics and so on and so forth. Okay, so there are some screen options which I may have a later a bit of a look at. It's no tragedy anyway. And that is what our desktop looks like. One may say a classical Linuxy desktop where you're having here a couple of apps down there which are um, uh, for, for easy access put, put in here. Then you're having the two screens on which you can sw sw switch the desktops. And this little field here would be then where my apps are running. And what apps do I even have here? Mm -hmm. So, uh, applications, exactly. I think the selection was not so bad. So, regarding the accessories, we are having, um, yeah, LeafPad, which, which I'm fond of as, a, as an editor in particular. I do like LeafPad. Archive Manager, XF Burn, and so on. Games, not too much, but very valuable, DOSBox because that gives me access not only to games, but to the entire world of MS-DOS. Then we are having MT Paint. I mean, don't underestimate DOS, you know? Once I saw for DOS an editor called iEdit. I think it was even iEdit Lite or something. Uh, it was said that it could edit multiple megabyte large text files. I tried it out and it was true. It was only loading a portion of the file into memory and it was working extremely smoothly. And many modern text editors can't do what I edit can. So it's good to have DOS. <laughs> Regarding graphics, it has empty paint. I love empty paint. So that's great. Internet. Now it has Firefox ESR. I like the selection of having Firefox on board, definitely. It also has um, Dillo in case you want to but I don't know. <laughs> and it has links. So excellent transmission, I must really say. Uh, excellent selection. Transmission is also there. <laughs> so we have a BitTorrent client. We have multiple browsers for depending on how low our system requirements shall go. Then we're having here in the multimedia section, unfortunately, no VLC, but we're having somehow apparently multiple YouTube viewers. We do have the MPV media player though, so no, not too badly equipped at all. Office, we're having LibreOffice. So I like that it didn't save up on LibreOffice. Also PDF viewer, like it, it leaves nothing to be desired really. And yeah, preferences there was this are under this um, screen setting app, but uh, how much it worked. So it it has also Genie as a text editor. So you have actually LeafPad and Genie. And regarding the system um, selection, you're having Rocks Filer as a file manager. And, and lovelyly, you're having a root terminal, just like that. Yeah, my username here is demo. And so is demo the password for this. And there we are having a root at antics. Hope you see all of this. So it works extremely snappily so far. Let's install it. And then let's try it out. I think this is definitely one of the candidates for this machine to stay. Like it is a very beautiful distribution. <sighs> but if it would be so cool if it could just maximize. Yes. You know, sometimes when, when something is off screen, because your screen is um, having a way too miserable resolution, then that works that you maximize it. So checking installation media, press escape to skip. Yeah, sure. Skip it. No, I don't want it to check. Just, just assume that everything is correct. Right utter trash if it is not. Such is the life of the modern Linux user. Based on Debian stable. Ah, well, we are happy about that. Okay, great. I mean, I I'm fine with that. 
Oh, whatever. But being based on Debian is a good thing, of course, because maybe... Ah, oh, regular install using the entire disk, please. Yes, no encryption. Thank you, just, just do so. Very good. Uh, what is there? Is there anything? No, have only one disk, exactly. Okay, next. Yeah, I am fine with that. Uh, we will not call it antics, we will call it antiquities. Oh no, 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 no. Let's call it differently. Uh, let's call it CDC Cyber. <laughs> and the computer domain is not example.com, it's gonna be CDC Cyber. Actually, none. Ah, whatever. Let's just call both the same. The CDC Cyber and the Domain CDC Cyber. Or... Let's call it simply Supercomputer. Okay, great. Next, please. Locale, no, I mean, the English is fine, but I'm not in America. And I'm not in Amsterdam either, which is a bit of a pity because Amsterdam is very beautiful. And then system clock uses local time format, please, 13. Service settings, advanced, yeah, sure. <laughs> what are you going to start up, my dear? Uh, we are going to get cups started up by default. So I'm just going to leave it this way. I don't mind. Mouse event server. Okay. Optimize Linux laptop battery life. Let's say that might not be necessary. <laughs> Hold on. 15 year old desktop. I wonder, is it even possible to turn off cron without causing utter chaos? So, Bluetooth. I might eventually get something with Bluetooth on it, so I'll better leave that on in future experiments. All right, next. Default user login name. Let's make it simply Uzor and give it the same password, haha. <laughs> will, will it protest the password? Will it tell me, oh my god, you can't do that? And I want to have an administrator account. Password for root. A root? Like, what else should it be? <laughs> I, I just see the security guys wincing at this. Uh, Auto login, yes. Save life, desktop changes, I didn't change a thing. Next. And uh, now, apparently we have to wait until it copies the new system. I'll spare you that. See you in a moment when it has done that. Note to self, they apparently have a forum called www.antixforum.com. Might come in handy at some point because I think I'm definitely liking this system so far. Yeah, the installation is complete. Automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed. Yes, please. So that's it. And now we will be rebooting into our new system. All right, let's see how long it takes to boot. Antics grew your group your room at advanced options. Okay, didn't do anything fast enough, but would have had a chance like if I had pressed the arrow keys fast enough. Oh, 
All right. Changed fonts multiple times, so this is really going okay. And again, screen resolution 640 by 480. I'm going to fix it later because this is going to take maybe a moment. I could also switch kernels or something. But look at the RAM usage. 129 megabyte of the two available. So that's nothing. What will happen if I go to the applications and do the most important thing, start the browser? Uh, RAM usage is growing. We are at 15% captain. <laughs> so Firefox has started. I can do whatever I want here. Okay, we're still at less than 500 megabyte. Let's go to the BBC. <laughs> we always go to the BBC. It just somehow happened. I, I did not plan it to be that way. All right. But I like the BBC. <laughs> like evidently, right? So. News are as always awesome. I mean. Ah. <laughs> terrible. And RAM usage is just at half a gigabyte browsing a modest news site. So, a 23 course meal in a remote fjord. Let's, let's start with that maybe, huh? <laughs> so, as you can see, browsing is not lightning fast, but entirely possible. How's the RAM usage going? Yeah, just above half a gigabyte. That's not the end of the world. Yeah, now it makes all these suggestions, which we do not care about all that much. Uh, here, let's go for help and about Firefox. So we are at 102.3 ESR. That's not bad. I'm not going to change the browser. Like this is just fine. So we saw that working. And how about we also start LibreOffice Writer. Uh, yeah, <laughs> variety of user interface options, great. Thanks. So, I mean, this is terrible. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to zoom out in order to be able to use this on, on a screen like this. But if I say, hello, everybody, then it is readable. Well, a bit smeared. It's also smeared for me. So maybe I'll have to fix my screen eventually. I can make it fat. I can make it large. Larger still. Much larger. Make it make it like this. Yes. Hello, everybody. So <laughs> LibreOffice Writer is working just fine. Firefox 2. And RAM usage is still under one gigabyte. I mean, I love that. So we are now having... Uh, don't save pretty much everything which one would normally need now of course applications accessories maybe here is the terminal rxvt okay fine can i right click i cannot what is this tradition of being unable to right click x term terminals anyway so which apt do we have apt we have apt apt update oh yes sure and sudo v sudo now there's an element which i like to do always password for user is user oh i mistyped i can mistype on four letters yes 
Now there's one thing I always like to do because I don't like it particularly to to all the time have to tell my password. So it is to this is this is not V I this is nano. So I'm just typing no password all very good. Control X to save this. Yes, yes, yes. Just just do so. Very good. And now sudo su. Yeah, root without password. That's how I imagine things. So apt update. Heck, I like this so much. <laughs> I might just use it as a main desktop system eventually. Like, this is super lightweight and doing exactly what I want. And it's not whining like, <laughs> you know who, Ubuntu, I'm looking at you. <laughs> so it, it can upgrade things. But what happens if I just want to install something? Um, I don't need sudo now, though. Apt install. It will have it 100%. ECL. I love ECL Lisp. Yes. So that is how long it would take. Does it actually have? Let's open a different tab. But Control Shift T doesn't work. Oopsie daisy. That's weird. Okay. Uh, maybe I need to start another terminal. Ah, that would be strange. Okay, anyway, I'm, I'm nearly done here. If we don't have a midnight commander, you see the thing is we need a midnight commander. ECL, are you there? Oh, yes, you are. This is awesome. Very good. Midnight commander. Oh, I don't even need to install this. I love this distribution. So far, I must say Antex is the winner of all the experiments so far. Like, design is reasonably nice. Screen resolution is just the only thing one may need to fix. But if I were to use the legacy kernel, I wouldn't even have that issue. But other than that, it has really everything one wishes. So, as you could see, speed is fine in everything, including in installing things. It has access to the Debian repositories, so you're not stuck with some weirdo type of packages, which some other mini Linuxes would, would cause you to be. And resources, it uses very reasonably. Design is fine. I must say, so far, Antix is, for me, the winner in terms of um, mini Linuxes. Also, the ISWN window manager is, is a traditionally good and light one. So that's pretty much it, I must say. I am satisfied with this and very likely this is going to be the one I'm going to leave on this disk even if I do further experiments. And with that, today's review ends. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to greet you here soon again. I wish you until then a wonderful time. And from me, goodbye. Post dictum. <laughs> I tried a script called SMXI to fix my graphics card issues. So you log out of the graphical environment, log in into the text only environment, run S. M, X, I, enter as a root. And then you, you get to, you know, update all sorts of things. It behaves very much like as if you're installing Linux anew. Like it is a, apparently a very powerful script. Supposed to get me a newer graphics card driver. However, my card is unsupported. So unsurprisingly, the legacy kernel could boot the resolution correctly, whereas the newer one could not. Well, I guess I'll have to live with that unless I want to really delve into it. Or maybe I can set it to VESA or something. But that's it, basically, with the recognition of my NVIDIA card, my ancient NVIDIA card, 
in a more present repo. And so <laughs> that's the end of this odyssey. The resolution thing won't really be fixed.